Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for something that is very exciting because we are here to take a look at Humankind. I was finally granted access to some of the open dev stuff for Humankind, which is kind of like a pre-alpha version of the game for the devs to get feedback and things of that sort. So I've been granted access to the third wave of the open dev stuff, which means I will have access to all three of these scenarios. So uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the first one, and I'm just going to give some general impressions. That's what I'm going to do for all three, is just give some general impressions, and then perhaps after playing all three, I'll give some overall feedback type things, and, you know, my thoughts on humankind as a whole. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the first scenario here, which is based on Babylon. So in this scenario, you are starting out in... Sort of the early game, uh, I would say. It's definitely, it's not the earliest era, though. There is an era before the one where you even found cities where you're kind of like a hunter-gatherer tribe. If you want to take a look at that, go ahead and check, check out Potato McWhiskey's video on it because he got uh, very, very early access to it and was able to take a look at some of that gameplay. So I will be sure to link his video in the description below if you want to see what happens even before this. At the time of recording this video, I've given this scenario two playthroughs, and I'll probably do even a few more after I finish recording this, so you might see some gameplay with some different, like, settlement locations and things like that, and that, that's, that's the reason why, just because it's from multiple things of gameplay here. So, starting out in this scenario, you have one settlement that is on a hill, which is kind of like your, your capital settlement, and the way that settlements work in this game is, unlike Civ, well, I guess, I guess in some way it is sort of similar to Civ, so... In Civ, your border colors indicate, you know, what tiles you can work and things of that sort, and that is kind of how it works in this game as well, but not quite. So obviously you can see my borders are very large here, but upon founding a settlement, you can only work the tiles, uh, it's called exploiting tiles in this game, but you can only exploit the resources on the tiles that are exactly adjacent to your settlement center. So this game does have something that is kind of similar to districts because they're called extensions. So there are various extensions for food and infrastructure, which is inf infrastructure is practically production and science and things of that sort. And what these uh, what these extensions do is they allow you to exploit the resources of that type on the adjacent tiles that are adjacent to them. So um, you you'll be able to see here that I put down a food exploitation, which is called a a, a, for, or a sorry a food extension, which is called a farmer's quarters. And upon placing that down, I will be able to exploit all the surrounding tiles that are uh, that are adjacent to that farmer's quarters. These quarters also do get bonuses from being adjacent to other quarters and things like that. So if you put two farmer's quarters near each other, then they're each going to get a little bit of extra food from it. And there are various uh, synergies like this, kind of like adjacency bonuses for districts in Civ. I should mention that just because I play mostly Civ, that's the main strategy game I play, that's probably the game that I'm going to be drawing the most, you know, similarities to, so if you're wondering why I'm talking about Civ a lot, that's why it's it's sort of my base of reverence and kind of like the gold standard for 4X strategy games, and it kind of has been for a while. So the other major option that you have for building in cities is called infrastructure, and I apologize because I realized that I just misspoke on what I said as I listened back to it. So the equivalent of production is called industry, not infrastructure. So infrastructure is like the equivalent of buildings in cities. So where extensions are very similar to districts, uh, infrastructure is very similar to just buildings, you know, like your granaries, water mills, things like that. Um, and these will provide straight yield bonuses, uh, you know, in terms of industry and food, things like that. But they also will have some other effects, like giving ad uh, um, some additional food adjacency bonus to your, uh, your farmer's quarters that are adjacent to one another, or things of that sort. So... There's a lot of options I found that you have here. So this was, you know, a very small snippet of the game. This was, I believe that you get 25 turns, or maybe it was 30. But there are a lot of options in those turns. And on one hand, it was a little bit overwhelming from, you know, like a new player perspective. So whenever you first play this game, kind of expect to be a little bit overwhelmed. Even as someone who's a Civ veteran, I, I still had... You know, quite a bit of, of digging to do to, to be able to understand what was actually going on with a lot of these things because there's a lot of stuff thrown at you all at once and it is a little bit overwhelming to start with. That being said though, more options means more uh, room to strategize and have different play styles and things like that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's going to take a lot more play time and you know, maybe perhaps a peek at the actual full game before it's, it's able to be decided as to whether or not there are too many options in the game, or if it's just right, or if it's not enough, who really knows for sure, but first impressions is that it's a little bit much. Let's talk about exploration for a little bit, so this was another big part of this first scenario here, just because it is fairly early on in the game, and so one of the things that, you know, as I mentioned before, 
Realistically, if you were playing this game, you would have uh, been exploring for quite a few turns before you even settled your first settlement, so this is not exactly akin to what the full game will be like, but uh, either way, I was still able to take my scouts around, and there are things called discoveries on the map, which are effectively like goody huts, little things that you can uh, move your scout over, and they'll give little uh, yield bonuses like, uh, I don't know, like 5 gold, 10 science, things of that sort that will affect your cities whenever you pick them up. I must say that the map on this game is pretty beautiful as well. There's a lot of really interesting geographical features on it, and there's a lot of uh, very, very stark differences in how the terrain looks across the multiple parts of the map. I'll try to show a few different clips here, but there's, you know, some really cool-looking jungle areas, there's some plains, some rocky areas, there's the coastline, and all of it looks distinctly different from everything else, so I think, I think they did a really nice job of making the world look cool. So this map uh, here is not randomly generated, well, maybe it is randomly generated, but it is a set map for the scenario, so I can't speak on how random generation as a whole will work for this game, or, you know, if, you know, like anything of that sort, but this map here definitely looks pretty cool, and I think it is definitely a big plus for the game. Just visually, it's, it, it looks very nice. In a similar vein to the graphics, uh, if performance is something that concerns you, I'll talk about that for a little bit. So I was playing on the maximum settings for this game at 1440p. Uh, my PC specs, I have a RTX 2080 Super and an R7 3700X with 48 gigs of RAM. And this game was running at about 65 FPS, which admittedly is not that great. I mean, granted, it is pre-alpha, so there's still plenty of time to optimize this further. But in most games, you know, like in a game like Civ, early on in the game, I tend to get around like, um, you know, at least 150 FPS, sometimes even over 200. So quite a bit higher than this game, but there is still plenty of room for optimization. Obviously, this is a much newer game with better textures and things like that. Um, but I definitely think it could use a little bit of optimization just because uh, the hardware in my PC is is pretty good by modern standards. So I would expect something like that to run a little bit better than around 60 FPS, um, and especially uh, like early on in the game like this when most of the stuff that's on screen is just the map without a lot of whole, you know, like settlements and units and all things like that. Time between turns was very speedy, though. There were some times where I didn't even realize that it was, like, that it had even started, uh, you know, calculating the time between turns because it was just, like, boom, click, immediately next turn. So that is something that was very nice to see. Uh, it's definitely a little bit faster than Civ, even in the early game. So uh, props to them for getting that so fast early on in the game. I did get a small look at the combat in this game from this scenario, so you're not really fighting any other players in this game. The only thing that you can really fight is animals. So uh, animals kind of spawn in a similar vein to barbarians in Civ, where there's uh, little animal sanctuaries that will spawn animals like deer or mammoths or things like that. And you can either go and ransack the sanctuary, which will stop them from spawning and give you a little bit of gold, or you know you can fight the animals and things like that. So combat in this game I would describe as pretty good. It's yeah, I mean, I'll leave it at pretty good. There's definitely some, uh, like, a little bit of area to be improved, uh, and maybe just seeing more combat, which I know is going to come in Scenario 2, so be looking out for that video very shortly. Uh, I, I haven't played Scenario 2 before making this video, so uh, my opinions may change after playing that, because I know Scenario 2 is much more military-focused, but... There is unit stacking in this game, so you can stack your scouts together here. So you can see, uh, I'll maybe show a little clip of whenever I was fighting a deer. Uh, I have two units in my army, and you have a general per army that kind of, you know, helps offset some of the maintenance cost of those units. And whenever you actually get into battle, there's like a certain zone that you can deploy your units to. So you get to select where you deploy your, your units. I would assume that the defender gets to select where they deploy their units as well. And then it kind of goes back and forth in turns where you attack with your units, they attack with theirs, things of that sort. So the attacker gets to, uh, you know, attack first. Uh, defender is obviously defending first, things like that. Um, it was pretty good. I, I mean, I don't want to say too much about it just yet because it, it, felt, it felt very easy, you know, beating up on the deer and things like that. But um, I can definitely see that this might feel a little sluggish whenever there's a lot of units being involved because... Just because of the fact that you have like these really ex that you you can have these really expansive armies with a lot of units and you can bring in reinforcements, you know, I I, I believe that you can bring in reinforcements midway through battles to kind of reinforce the troops. I feel like that could lead to some some really long and kind of tedious standoffs. So I'm 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 of the school of combat philosophy of I want things to be quick and snappy. So like in a game, you know, like Civ, 
you have a combat, maybe you, you know, smack back and forth with a few warriors for a few turns, and then the combat's finished. And that, that's kind of like how I, how I like combat. I don't like combat that drags on for a long, long time. So I could see this being a, a potential issue for me, but as I had mentioned, um, you know, stay tuned for the next episode after I play some of those military scenarios and maybe we'll get a little bit of an update on it. But um, for starters, I definitely don't think it's bad. I think it has a lot of potential to be very good, and I'm interested to see how it plays out later on. As far as research is concerned, there's not really too much to say here. It's kind of, I don't know, it's pretty much standard for any strategy game. You have a research tree, you make science per turn, you get text, they give things back to you. Um, it's, there's not really much to be said there. It's pretty much standard, and it, I mean, it's a very it's a very fine system. Like, I have, I have no problems with it, just because that is kind of the standard for strategy games. And when it comes to something like that, I really don't find there to be a problem with it. So, I'll show a little bit of the tech tree here, but this is only a very small portion of it, because the, the eras before and after are locked from this build of the game so you can't even look at them so uh but this is what we have so far and it's you know it's good it's it's pretty much the standard one other thing that i want to talk about is how you get your settlements and things like that and maybe i should have talked about this earlier because we're probably way past this point in the gameplay by now but you take your scouts out into these so um, i'm sure you can see from the map here that the game is kind of divided into sectors um where the borders of them are clearly defined before you settle anything on them. So what you do is you take your scout and you can select to put down an outpost and that effectively claims the sector for you. So other players won't be able to enter that sector unless you have open borders with them and things of that sort, you know, it effectively makes makes it yours. And then eventually after a while you are able to spend 100 gold to upgrade that outpost into a settlement and then that's whenever, you know, it effectively becomes a city. While you have the outpost down, you still are able to get resources, so there are luxury and strategic resources in this game, just like most other strategy games. And this was something that I thought was kind of cool, that you don't have to have a full settlement there in order to be able to uh, exploit some of those resources. So that was something that I liked, and I do like the outpost thing, that it makes it so that you can kind of claim where you want to put your cities before you even place them. And the other really thing that I like is that after you place your outpost down, you are still able to move them. I mean, it's gonna it takes a few turns to move them, but if you decide that you want to move it somewhere else to maybe get the yields on different tiles instead, or maybe you explore a little bit more after putting down the, outpo the outpost and claiming the sector, then you can decide that, you know, okay, I want to move this over here to the other side of the sector that I can now see, and you have that option available. So I think that's really cool, and I, I like how they've implemented this in the game. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the UI for a little bit, because this is something that I had a few frustrations with. Um, maybe, maybe I'm making more of a deal with this than it deserves to be, you know, made. But um, the biggest thing that I had a problem with with the UI was figuring out how to close the panels. So honestly, like I don't even know how panels close in a game like Civ because I, I do it so subconsciously that I don't even realize it. But in this game, the one thing that bugged me was whenever you have city panels open or the research panel or things like that. You have to right click on like an empty area of the screen to close them. Whenever you have a unit panel open though, you have to left click on an empty area of the screen to close that. And if you right click, it moves the unit. So uh, I, there were a number of times when I accidentally moved units while trying to close the panel. So that would, that's something, It's maybe it's a very nitpicky thing and maybe I'm just a little bit stupid not, you know, not remembering how to close the panels. But it was a, a, a point of frustration for me as a new player that it wasn't consistent across what type of panel is open as to how you close it. Same thing with escape. I think escape was closing some panels, but sometimes whenever I click it, it would open up, you know, like the menu where I could exit the game and things like that. So just a little bit more consistency on that front, I think would be nice. There also were some weird things with unit pathing going on where I would try to move to an adjacent tile and for some reason it would move, you know, two tiles instead of just straight over. I don't really know what was going on there. Maybe maybe it's actually like a more advantageous to do that uh, thing to do that in terms of movement. I don't really know, but that was something else that was just a little bit funky that I noticed that was going on. So yeah, those were my uh, initial thoughts on Scenario 1 of Humankind. As I mentioned, I will be going and looking at Scenarios 2 and 3, so if you're looking for some more of that Humankind gameplay, be sure to subscribe if you're, uh, you know, looking for some more random commentary and first impressions on the game, and if you want to see it for yourself. I should also mention that this video was not sponsored in any way by the Humankind devs. I, I just I got into the the public open dev program just like anybody else could if you had applied. Um, so there was so they are not influencing my views of this game at all. So thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you liked the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Humankind gameplay, feel free to subscribe. 
Thank you for watching, and goodbye.